Okay, for chapter six, know which types of variables we use to create a scatter plot. So this actually goes into the conditions later on because we use quantitative variables to produce a scatter plot. A scatter plot is bivariate quantitative, meaning you need two quantitative variables to produce a scatter plot. I always say statistics builds on itself. These tests are cumulative in a sense because you need to know the earlier chapters to understand bivariate quantitative displays are scatter plots. So let's go ahead and interpret some scatter plots here. Here we are with some scatter plots right here. And as you'll notice, uh, they're all kind of a mess. Um, you know, we usually give you something kind of better on the test. We want to interpret the scatter plots with their strength, direction, form, and unusual features. So strength is going to be how close it is to positive or negative one. The strongest scatter plot right here is between Wednesday text and Saturday text, as in the more you text on Wednesday, the more you text on Saturday. And you can see this down here. And this is a scatter plot matrix, uh, correlation matrix rather. So we're looking at multiple correlations and multiple scatter plots. And you'll notice it just repeats if you look at either side of it. This is the repeat right here, just flipping the X and the Y. So with this in mind right here, this is the strongest one right here. Its direction is somewhat linear. We see a few outliers over here. Um, so somewhat linear direction to this. Um, well, it is pretty linear. I don't know if there's a bend. So there's kind of a linear relationship. And also there's a presence of outliers. So I'd probably say it would fail the outlier condition right here. So quantitative variables, straight enough, no outliers. It has problems with the outliers condition. And let's see right here. Strength, direction, form, unusual features. So strength, this one is very strong because it's very close to positive one. Uh, direction, it's positive because it goes up. That's the best way to tell it's positive. And form, it's pretty linear. Unusual features, um, it's got some outliers that break the trend. People who, in this instance, really like to text on Saturday, but don't like to text on Wednesday. So it's the Wednesday axis down there that you can't see because Saturday axis is over here. They're texting like crazy on Saturday and they're not texting on Wednesday. They said they send out a thousand texts on Saturday. Wow, that's insane. I don't get it. So remember, be able to interpret strength, direction, form, unusual features for these. And yes, knowing the difference between explanatory and response variable, the explanatory variables are your X variables because they explain. Classic examples of this in the notes are things like SAT scores explaining your college GPA because you would think, you know, someone takes the SAT before going into college or ACT before going into college. So would that explain someone's college grades? That's a good example there. Sometimes it's not so clear, such as with height and weight. Someone's height might explain their weight like their weight explains their height. So sometimes it's we try to be clear cut in these things where X explains Y. That's what we try to do right there. Knowing the balance for R, very important right here. R goes from negative one to positive one. So as you can see here, going from negative one to positive one, negative one is perfect negative, where positive one is perfect positive. And you can see the cloud getting more dispersed as we go towards zero. It doesn't matter what the slope of the line is, it just matters how tight they are around that linear relationship. Now it's also important to note that we can have relationships that are not linear that have no linear correlation. R only measures linear correlation. So we have to make sure we're using it correctly because we want to look at linear correlation right here because all of these do have some relationship. It's just not linear. So once again, R goes from negative one, which is perfect negative, to positive one, which is perfect positive. Be able to match R to example scatter plots. There is some kind of cool uh, examples online. If you do scatter plot guessing into Google, you might be able to look at some there, but just being able to kind of analyze and look at, okay, this looks like the R square. This looks like the R for it could be, I don't know, 0.8. That definitely means it's positive linear correlation. That's pretty strong. So knowing what's going on there. Know the three necessary conditions for correlation. Quantitative variables, straight enough condition, and no outliers. Quantitative variables means both variables are quantitative. Straight enough condition means both then we have a straight line that would approximate the relationship. It's straight enough to that line. 
and no outliers conditions means that we don't have outliers, things that break the bivariate relationship. Describe what it means for correlation to be negative one, zero, and one. Negative one means perfect negative correlation. So it's just follows a straight line down and it's perfectly on that. Zero means that there is no linear correlation. So it could be that there's a nonlinear relationship, some sort of kind of parabola or something like that. And one means there's pos po perfect positive linear correlation. All the points are perfectly on a straight line that has an upward slope to some degree. Understanding that the difference between correlation and causation, correlation does not equal causation. So if we see even really significant correlation, like it's like, oh, uh, the more students attend review sessions, the higher their grades. Does this mean that review sessions cause higher grades? No. It, it, it could be that, and, and think about this, it could be the students who care more about their grades go to review sessions. So you could say like, well, maybe it's just students who really care about their grades go to review sessions. The review sessions don't do anything. So the more you attend review sessions, the higher your grade can't be proven by correlation. So um, correlation does not equal causation. We have classic examples in the notes with like sharks and ice cream sales. Shark attacks go up and ice cream sales go up. Is one causing another? No, it's time of the year. And that's really a good segue because that's a lurking variable. Um, this is a true example of a lurking variable, something that's actually causing changes in X's and Y, because it's not the shark attacks causing ice cream sales to go up or ice cream sales causing shark attacks to go up. It's the time of the year actually controlling both those variables. So when there's some background variable actually changing X and Y and making it look like X and Y are changing because of X and Y, then that's the lurking variable. I call that a Z variable sometimes because it's it's not X and Y changing each other. Z changes X and Z changes Y. And it just happens to change them both in the same type of way, making it look like that X and Y are changing each other. Once again, shark attacks and ice cream sales are changed by time of year, but they both are changed pretty, you know, in the same degree by time of year. So it looks like when one goes up, the other goes up, but they're not actually being changed by the other. Looking variables are actually causing the changes in the background. And that has it for this chapter. Email me if you have questions. Good luck. <laughs>